Glad to have you all aboard once again. Welcome to the Anime Boomer Podcast. This is episode three featuring Yellow Flash. I'm the master of boomering here at the Anime Boomer Podcast. The guy who presses all the buttons keeps the ship from crashing into a planet, at least this time. You all know me as Gator. Helping me anchor the podcast is my co-host, Spooky Weave Trash. How you doing, Spooky? Gator's the master. I'm the submissive at boomering. Hello, everybody. <laughs> You're not going to give us an ooh-woo like last time? No. Do you want me to, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right. So we have with us today Yellow Flash. Most of you guys are probably here from his channel, actually. That's usually how it goes. We're still building the podcast, bringing on people that uh, like to talk about anime, know a lot about anime. And Flash is one of the guys that uh, was involved from the Vic Mignogna stuff from the very beginning. How are you doing, Flash? Good. Good to be here. It was good to talk to you. Absolutely. You know, and it's it's amazing to me thinking about that was 2019 when the Vic saga first began. We talked uh, quite a bit about it with Nick Ricada last week. It blows my mind to think it's been going on this long and still hasn't been resolved. Well, still people talk about him every day for two years. It's insane. It's like at some point, it's just like move on or get over it or something like Still talking about him every day, trying to raise couch money off of his name. Some Mars people Girl. make it their whole personality. Yeah, to hate on Nick <laughs> v- Vic Vignata, you know, like uh, like a certain ex, that guy with the glasses, comrade. I always forget that she's a part of that guy with the glasses. Holy shit. That was something, right? Was, wasn't she like one of the people that was like, whenever there was a doctrine about that guy with the glasses getting involved with not so kosher behavior. She was like one of the people calling him out. If I'm not yeah, cor- incorrect, uh, change the channel. That was her. That was her whole movement. Did she start that movement, or was that like something she hopped on? I, I don't really know. I want to say she hopped on it with uh, Lindsay Ellis and what was Linkara's ex name? I can't remember. Uh, Iron Liz. Iron that- Liz. Iron Liz. Yeah. She, actually, like Iron Liz. She was pretty cool. Talked to her quite a bit at the beginning of all of that stuff that happened. I think she dropped off the internet. I think Iron Liz got a lot of the brunt end of it, honestly, because, well, Iron Liz and Lindsay, I think in particular, because people are like, Lindsay's eye candy. We got to, like, give her tons of dick jokes. And Iron Liz was kind of in the background doing all the grunt work and actually broke, I believe she broke a leg or something or sprained an ankle. So something happened where she got injured and she had to write a waiver to <laughs> Oh, so she couldn't sue him? Yeah, yeah, so she couldn't <laughs> sue him. Yeah, it, it was pretty, that was an interesting little saga, especially if you've been watching, like, the uh, Nostalgia Critic for a minute there. Yeah, I never really paid too much attention to him. I mostly just paid attention to, like, the controversies and stuff like that that, that would pop up from time to time. I had I had friends that were, like, big fans of just the uh, the Nostalgia Critic stuff, but really didn't like get into the minutia of all the other different shows that were going on on Channel Awesome. But I it's would really... always like catch the crazy stuff that happened. Well, like you have all these like weird, like limp wristed weirdos, right? Gay nerds on the internet that have honestly no control over their own personal life getting involved with business. So, I mean, obviously a lot of YouTubers now know how to like deal with their businesses, but like back in the day, it was like nothing but nerds, like nostalgia critic, right? And so I think what happened was there was a weird limbo there where he actually sold the Nostalgia Critic brand to some weird bald guy in the background. I can't remember his name off the top of my head for the life of me. Can you guys remember his name? You guys know who I'm talking about? I know exactly who you're talking about. Uh, God, it's been so freaking long since I've... God, did we have to do research on this program? God damn it. (laughs) Hold on a minute. The, The biggest thing I know about Channel Awesome is my interactions with them I've come to the conclusion that most of them are all pieces of shit. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good uh, observation. Uh, I yeah. mean, Mr. Medicare did a whole, like, what was it? Yeah, four or five uh, part video series about I that? I watched all of his videos on it to catch up on who the fuck these people were, like, when all this was going down. <gasps> Mike Mashad. Mars Girl was the key player in all of it. So, like, I'm like, who the fuck are all of these people? So wow. I watched all of Medicare's videos on it. 
like uh here's the th- his name is mike bashad and i was just i just googled it real quick so channel awesome has like a wikipedia because of course they do and the estimated revenue they made in 2009 alone was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is obscene amount of money in 2009 like that's astronomical i 200 and something thousand now yeah that is youtube I mean, success level money in like 2009 like, that, how many that subscribers was did pewdiepie have in 2009 I don't think he was much of a thing in 2000. I think he blew up 2013 or no, 2010, 2011, I want to say, because I was in high school. So I graduated 2013. Sorry, I'm old. Um, <laughs> so I graduated in 2013. And I believe that's where he peaked. So PewDiePie channel. He's revenue. always kind of reinvented himself pretty good. I, I love PewDiePie now. I wasn't a fan back in the day because I could tell that he was like, it was. He was being fake and gay back in the day. <laughs> but now it's like it, we're like a similar age now. And I just kind of grew up with him. Now he just kind of reacts to me and he's whatever about it. I I enjoy that, actually, unironically. Revenue. See, let's say like 2010. Let me see. Social Blade. Does it go all the way back to 2010? Uh, it should go to where he first started. Because a lot of websites didn't even track this stuff until like the PewDiePie saga really started. So, so yeah. anyway, I don't think, uh, <laughs> I don't think social blade even tracks it. Cause I think social blade only tracks it from when the website like first started. I'm trying to find this information, but it only wants to do recently. Um, Oh, it only goes back to 2018. I just pulled it up. Yeah. Yeah. He became a YouTuber. His first YouTube channel, which 15 million for November 1st, 2013. So that's yeah. still like he was a mil- multi millionaire by 2013, more than likely. Yeah. So the top oh, yeah. YouTuber at the time was Ryan Higa in 2009. If that tells you how old, <laughs> how old we're talking about. Mm. When all the- so that was a lot. That was for 2009 for an internet content creator. 150,000 was an incredible amount of money. I, yeah. I'm looking, I at, feel like- I'm looking at his social play. <laughs> It's somewhere. It says it's somewhere in between thirty-four thousand and five hundred and forty-three thousand dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> I would be willing to safely bet he makes about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month. Easily. And I'm not even looking at his super chats. Uh, so according to Statista, Statista, it's he he made four million dollars by twenty thirteen PewDiePie. So, I mean, either way, like, I mean. As influent, well, I mean, that's just considering like revenue, ad revenue. That's not considering like, you know, other profits he probably made, some kind of other donations, because like Doug Walker was extremely influential back in the day. You know, like he influenced like people like John Tron, who's like extremely successful nowadays. Like, well, just think about all of the channels that kind of like popped up from Channel Awesome and all of the content creators that kind of like modeled their persona and their mannerisms and the way and they present things. I the way hate in which they... this thing right here. Let me tell you why it's bad. <laughs> exactly. And like most of the time they wouldn't even like scream very loud too because they're all like recording their mom's like, you know, house. And they're like, I hate this thing. Ah. Like, <laughs> it's very that era too. Like they just pretend scream at things and get mad at things. And it's, I don't know, like I... Internet humor back in the day was very edgy because it was very much anti-establishment. It's not nowadays. Now it is the establishment. So it was like, instead of like watching stuff like on G4 or whatever, where people were praising video games instead of not criticizing it that well, people were just screaming at it because it was like the edgy thing to do. And people liked it, you know? I can't knock off, you know, previous internet humor being cringy nowadays because, I mean, it wasn't cringy back then. It was just what people liked, you know? things change now people just say internet celebrity they're stupid and let me tell you why they're stupid in a 10 minute long video stupid 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 anyway hello flash how are you (laughs) (laughs) so let's get back let's get back to mars girl now that we've kind of like set the table for channel can you show things on uh the screen for your when you upload this yes i guess i can't picture i'll put it in the text channel over on general yeah, go ahead and do that. Here's, a, here's this uh, this picture, picture that I captured. Because somebody was calling Nick Ricardo a liar, making fun of her because she's crowdfunding a $250 couch. Get a job. <laughs> so, yeah, get a job. 
So I went to her I went to her Twitch and just the first thing it's right there, right there at the top. We need a couch. Yeah, look at that. Here it is right here. Is she crying? She looks she like look it. Yeah, look, there it is crying, right man. there. We need a couch. Ten dollars, four percent, twenty six days to go. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Like I, I get like crowdfunding <laughs> like... for like you know, <laughs> maybe like supplies you need for like your um your channel, your Twitch, right? I get that. But uh, a couch? Really? Yeah, that does seem a little weird there. <laughs> you know, furniture right now is hard to get. I don't if I don't know if either of you had a furniture shop because I just moved into a new place, so I needed some furniture, and uh, I had a tough time just finding a chair. Like it's because there's there's so much shit that you wouldn't even think about that's like on shortage right now. Uh, if you have a pool, good luck getting chlorine tablets is a good example. Like everything is like these little odds and ends so I mean, like what kind of what kind of couch is she gonna get for 250 bucks right now it's gonna be probably like some shit that would like be on the corner you know you I drive mean, by list couch i mean <laughs> like what is going up in price like what is going furniture. up like what like what alone right what alone is three times the price as it used to be so like you could pay like a hundred dollars for like a little two by four like it's not i'm not even like kidding like you're like paying an astronomical amount of money because the pandemic like it of course it's shut everything down yeah but the shipment costs to get stuff shipped overseas because there's still places that are shut down and like they have to make up for the cost of lost revenue is a a pinch of a penny if i've uh, ever seen it and then of course gas prices are becoming astronomically high so (sighs) lumber's lumbers up too i saw uh Quartering's been posting pictures of that house he's building, and I'm I'm thinking like God that the cost of that house right now, because lumber is like high right now. I mean, quartering like, did you know that quartering's a millionaire? He'll tell you all about it. You know, he's hey, got to be know? to build a house in in 2021. <laughs> uh, God, I've heard of housing. I haven't looked for houses yet recently, but I've heard the housing market. Everything's it everything's I, expensive. I just went through it. I just went through it, but I sold a house, so like. I was able to kind of make things work a little bit better. Yeah. If you're just jumping into a house right now. Oof. Yeah. Cause if you, right. if you have a house already, the, you know, the price of that and the land and the house and everything goes up commensurate with the price of housing in general. So it kind of like not quite evens out. I made a, I, I got a lot of equity out of it that I was able to roll into the new place. Good. So it okay. kind of like balanced itself out, you know, if you get what I'm saying. Also, computer parts are super high, especially with crypto. Like it went, of course, crypto went down, crashed, but it's going to come back up eventually. Like the cost of like buying graphics cards is still. Yeah, I'd I'd love to build a new computer, but I'm just not doing it right now. I'm just not doing it right now. Can take it out of your taxes though. Yeah, it's just they're way overpriced. I'll just play. I'm kind of happy to be honest. I'm kind of happy with the Xbox Series X right now and my TV. Because I have a really nice TV, and uh, that thing's kind of on par with the computer I have right now. So, yeah, like this this couch situation, like that's not going to help your YouTube channel. Like you just you're just e begging at this point for that's all a she does. Well, supply. remember she was she's still suing me. Oh yeah, I oh, completely she's, forgot she's about what? that. <laughs> can that's you still open? I guess that lawsuit or that you... GoFundMe for her. Can you like um? Can you really explain what was going on? Or are you like on the hutch hush? Can you give us a TLDR? Oh, no. She hasn't officially sued me. She wanted, remember, she put out that big thing to dox me, said that I lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and all of this stuff because I used 616 as my location tag. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Which is fucking spoilers, spoiler alert. That's uh, Marvel's, Marvel's comic book universe. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> but, uh, so- she she thought that was like my real address or something and she made a GoFundMe so she could get legal representation and she raised four thousand four hundred and eighteen dollars. Well, I mean that's something, but that's not gonna cover legal fees, no, is it? It's uh No. They're but the a funny, little bit more expensive than that. <laughs> the funny thing about it is right after she got this money, she was traveling to cons. She got computer parts. Oh, she, uh, she showed, pulled a Zoe Quinn where she was like, I'm going <laughs> to do this thing with all this money. And then she just doesn't. 
<laughs> now, GoFundMe Here, I'll put it in is the, set in the up. General tab. Yeah, GoFundMe is set up so that, like, regardless, as long as she meets the goal, she gets the money. I think Indie Indiegogo is the one where it's a little more in depth, right? Or am I mixing the two up? I haven't. Uh, she didn't use. A, she didn't use an Indiegogo. She did GoFundMe. Indiegogo. I haven't. I haven't set one up yet. I will next month when I put my comic out. Awesome! I'd love to hype that. Yeah, yeah for I sure. I don't know. Like, I don't know whose legal fees only cost fifteen hundred dollars, but uh, she must have a really cheap lawyer. Well, it's enough to afford plane tickets and uh, computer parts at the time, which is exactly what she did. And nobody called her out on it, which I thought was hilarious. Like, nobody on her side said shit. It sh that just shows you how much they really uh, think about accountability. Well, you just look at all the people that just kind of, like, grabbed on to, like, the Vic stuff the moment that it happened. And you see, like, the same sorts of patterns. People just trying to get themselves over, to use a wrestling uh, parlance there. Uh, you know, just trying to promote themselves, trying to get money for themselves. And they it's just the worst kinds of people. Or even like this, uh, let me read this, uh, here, descriptor here. Hello, everyone. My name is, uh, Kaylin Su Su Sosido? Sosido? I, I think don't know it's how to say it. Whatever. I'm not what? sure. I just always call her Mars Girl. I have been creating online content for more than a decade and have been a large supporter of fan community culture, uh, for as long as I can remember. I will keep this as straightforward as possible to prevent any form of misunderstanding. This campaign is specifically for the basic base amount for the this, that is necessary for me to retain a, the legal services necessary for me to begin the process of a defamation. I can't read. I'm sorry. Defamation suit. Like so. Def I'm sorry. I'm retarded. Defamation suit. <laughs> I'm fucking retarded. I'm sorry. <laughs> Only thing I do is watch Japanese anime with subtitles. Defamation is against my service. Okay. So I don't think any lawsuit that's for defamation, I don't think the base base pay would be a hundred fifty what fifteen hundred dollars? I don't think that would cover fifteen hundred dollars was the goal. Yeah. This would have I, been a huge mistake for her if this had ever gone through because I would have crowdfunded legal fees too, and then I would have I would have sued her for hmm. sure for putting me through a hard time. And uh at, if you think about at the time with like you know how hot all the Vic stuff was, I'm pretty sure that I would have like just crippled her easily. Yeah. This I know this sounds like exactly this. I I was just reading Zoe Quinn's book um recently <laughs> for reasons because I'm working on a project. But this sounds exactly like the same stupid shit Zoe would say in her book of like she's like I'm getting harassed all the time, so give yeah, me money. She's she's like a discount Zoe Quinn. That's actually a good uh, that that's a good comparison. Mm. Yeah, who's fatter a, though, Zoe or her? Hmm. Who's what? Who's fatter? I want to know. Oh, Mars girl. Mars girl by by a long shot. Oh, she's really? Ballo she's ballooned up. You go look at her Twitch. Yeah, Ugh. she's not taking care of herself at all. Like she's like I don't, I don't go out of the house anymore. Yeah, but you stream every day. Getting hmm. closer and closer to Catwoman status. What does that mean with uh, the guy who used to play as George from the Jungle, where he's just like crying, you know, and he's got like the cut off hair and like the big bulgy like crying eyes? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, um, Brendan. Brendan Fraser. Yeah, Brendan Fraser. Like yeah. <laughs> he's just like crying. Ah. <laughs> uh. Hey, God, he looks bad now. I just googled his yeah, name. He looks terrible too. Good now. lord. Yeah. yeah. He never Didn't recovered. Didn't he go through that. like a really bad divorce though? Probably, you know. I don't I think so. He was kind of at the top of his game in Hollywood and then he fell off. Now he's voicing uh fuck, what's the name of the is it Robot Man from Doom Patrol? I think so. Let me let me try to send that meme to you, Gator, so we can compare and compare and contrast this piece of art with this piece of art. <laughs> what I just sent you. Oh no. Oh, yeah. poor Brendan Fraser. He used to be so hot, though. Like, when he played as George of the Jungle, there's, like, a TikTok going around where it's, like, watching George of the Jungle when I was a kid versus now, as an adult, you're like, oh, wow. Oh, oh. <clears throat> oh, well, I remember him from the... The biggest thing that I remember him from is the Mummy movies. Yeah. That first one was a really good movie. I don't know how, how well it holds up today. I'm sure that CGI isn't that great. 
Probably not. I don't know. I haven't seen the like mummy movie since I was a kid, so I it's can't been say a long, for sure. A long time. I have like I call it like a fan base now. A lot of people still love those movies and rewatch them all the time. That first one's really funny. Like some of those scenes. Remember when uh, that snaky guy is like in the corner and he's like showing all the religious symbols mm-hmm. to the mummy? I thought that was hilarious. What a uh, Hollywood and divorce does to a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Damn. So sad. It's like kind of like what Robin Williams kind of did with himself the last few years of his life. Because people like people said that he was um, not to put a downer on this, like super like high, high. Uh, what's it called? High energy podcast. With, but with, what Robin Williams did was people said that he was uh, an alcoholic. I think it was like Russ and he probably was. But it was highly suspected that it wasn't just alcoholism. It was the fact that he went through several divorces with different women. And because he was a multimillionaire, but he's, you know, he's not like a money tree yeah. that all these women tried taking all of his money one by one. And he had to pay out the divorces of like, I think like three or four different marriages. And it just kind of like, he basically had no money. So he had to yeah, work until if he had just, if he had just followed the Nicholas cage model, he would have pulled through it. What does Nicolas Cage do? Not marry anyone? No, it says yes to everything now. Literally every movie. It's like, oh, yeah. we, we have a, it's totally not Five Nights at Freddy's, and you're going to play a janitor. I'm in. Oh, I watched that movie. It's terrible. I, I thought it was going to be good, too. And uh, just because it looked like fun, but it was pretty god awful. Did you see it? I haven't. Mm, no. I, I completely forgot that it existed until this exact moment. I can't even remember the name of it, but it was uh, it wasn't a good movie. I thought it looked uh, kind of interesting. Now he's uh, chasing a pig, and it's, they're making it look like this is going to be some Oscar movie. Have you seen that? I haven't. Oh, Willie's Wonderland. My, where's my pig? He's he's chasing Mars Girl. Is what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I uh, his child's a weep too. I don't know if you guys know that. Nicholas but, uh, Cage. He, yeah, he he'll uh, he'll have several photos of himself uh, hanging out with cosplayers because his child really likes anime. I so like those are very common things you can find on the internet. Most uh most kids are weebs now <laughs> because yeah. that's the dominant form of entertainment. To be honest, I mean it's t- taking over everything. You guys want to talk about that about how uh, manga is totally uh, teabagging Western comics nowadays? Yeah, I, I think that's an interesting topic. It's just dominated everything. And there's so many reasons for it. You can find everything, like anything you want. But there's there's probably some kind of manga for it. Yeah, it's really diverse because a lot of Western comics, and we've talked about this quite a few times, they're just like, they, they don't, they're, I mean, superheroes are nice and all, but they don't really go beyond superheroes and like kind of social justice-y I know a lot of people think that that's cringe nowadays, but I, for lack of a better term, social justice leftism that's being pushed in comics. Because it's like you either have to have like a superhero that sells out to normies or it sells out to really depressed fat women like Mars Girl. Like <laughs> those are the only two gem- demographics they appeal to nowadays. Yeah, perfect example. I am not yeah. Starfire. Yeah, we know. It's like, would you rather <laughs> would you rather spend money on this book, the I Am Not Starfire, or would you rather pick up Uzaki Chan wants to hang out? The I choice like... is obvious. <laughs> oh fuck the Uzaki saga. That was so fun. Everyone's mad about her tits. I thought that shit was hilarious. Imagine being mad at tits. Can't relate. Holy shit. They don't it... like them. They don't it's like. Well, like now, take that back. They like the smaller ones. Women with big breasts don't exist. Well, it's it's weird to me um, <clears throat> that these like forward tumblerinas, right? And they'll like pride themselves on their. Well, they make their whole personality, their sexuality, or whatever, or their gender, and they'll be like, uh, you know, I'm a agendered lesbian, right? But they get really offended by tits. It's very perplex, perplexing to me. Like I don't understand it. I can't I can't explain why people that are supposedly attracted to women hate women. Or there's that one Smash player that I actually got into um, an argument with uh, one of my buddies called Dimitri Monroe. Uh, and he called everyone who liked Uzaki-chan a pedophile. And come to find <laughs> out, the dude was like sexually harassing children on Discord. Fuck him. So, yeah. yeah. Every time. 
almost every time that's how it works out. The mask comes off, man. Yeah. You call everyone a pedophile. I don't it's know. Like, it's kind it's of like the male feminist. Yeah, the, the male, male feminist, feminist who sneaks yeah. in. <laughs> Where, where's yeah, that stone toss comment? I would say, Reset ladies, never lock your never lock yourself in a room with a male feminist. It's it's a cope, man. I don't know. Like there, there are these limp wristed weirdos. Like uh, me and my friend Necro Thirteen, we call a. It's, if you're ever live on Twitch, we always call instead of saying pedo, we always call them smash players because it <laughs> it is a very uh, common difference. occurrence. Uh huh. <clears throat> Oh god, yeah, and Nickelodeon's it, releasing that new game that's like Smash Brothers like. Oh god. I, I didn't even put the two and two together. Look, John K, Dan Schneider, come on. We gotta get those two on. We gotta get them two on this. You know, Dan, <laughs> oh, no. Dan Schneider was the one that actually convinced Nickelodeon to change the um icon from like it was a little splat icon to feet. Uh, you know what? I'm not surprised. I'm not I, surprised at all. I can't prove it's true, but I've heard it from several people that that you know was the case. what he was doing with that. And Dan, the man Snyder. <laughs> he loves them feet. Where my bitch is at. Uh, going back to, like, the, the manga thing, I mean, in Japan, I don't think you could, like, Demon Slayer's the, the big thing this year. Like, you can't even get, I can't even find, because I was going to go, I was going to go pick up the manga and read it. And I can't find the first volume anywhere. Yeah. And I, I guess like people are saying it might not be back in stock till fucking October, which well, what the fuck so is going popular. on? With that? It's so popular amongst like um <clears throat> younger people because like on TikTok, that's all I see is just Demon Slayer. And I really, really liked Demon Slayer. I don't really like Shonen. I, think I haven't Shonen... seen the movie yet, so don't I'm waiting for I... the fucking Blu ray to come out. When I, is I that don't... coming out? I won't spoil anything, but I it's I mean it's just like I don't care for a lot of shonen honestly, uh, just because I find it kind of boring, predictable. Some people really fuck with it. I don't personally, but I, I love shonen. <laughs> I do too. Yeah, but uh, I I liked this one in particular because there's just like a higher quality with its storytelling and its animation and like its characters that you don't really find in a whole lot of shonen. It really sticks out from the crowd, like the 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 boar boy. Like, come on, like he is like in Inosuke. He's like, he's the reason I all even watched Demon Slayer to begin with because he's so fucking funny. Like, <laughs> and like the animation is so beautiful, and it really like appeals to Zoomers in particular too. And I feel like they're like the main demographic that are consuming these products because they're not buying out Superman and all that kind of stuff. Like that appeals nope. more to like an older demographic and children. So, like, the people that are in between the age of, like, older and children, they're the people that are buying most of these Demon Slayer products and manga products. You know, they're, they're the ones that are getting into, like, manga collection nowadays. Adolescence. Not... Mm-hmm. Well, so... look at even the, the price for some of this stuff. Like, I have the the Shonen Jump app, and only, it's only $2 a month, and you get everything. Mm-hmm. Which is, I mean... How do you even compete with that? That's how comics used to be. They used to be just a couple of cents. Like maybe if you bought like a ton of comics, you bought like $2 worth of comics a month. And now they're selling some of these just garbage American comics, Marvel and DC both for like five, six dollars, sometimes ten dollars for special issues. It's insane. That's how manga used to be. Manga used to be really, I don't know how expensive it is nowadays, but you could easily pay like $12 for one, one little comic book. Yeah, but you get so much with it. You get a couple of chapters. Some of them, if they're finished, I just bought, because I'd never read the Full Metal Alchemist manga. So I bought the whole thing and I got them in three in one, which I thought was a really nice value. It was only fourteen ninety nine for like three volumes. Wow. And uh, yeah, I've been reading through that. Um, uh, I didn't think that was too bad. Even the regular ones, when they're not three and one, I don't think ten bucks for. I mean, shit, these are like two hundred something pages usually. I think that's a pretty good deal, to be honest. Mm -hmm. As opposed to like what, like aren't most comics ninety nine for f like twenty something pages? Yeah, for twenty pages, yeah. And you can't even just read that one. You've got to read like, you know, thirteen other fucking books to keep up with it. It's expensive. Not to mention the volumes of other series that you have to follow 
because everything is a crossover event now. So if you're reading for a story in X-Men, you've got to go and pick up like the Incredible Hulk because something happens in there that's very important to like what you're reading right now. Or you've got to go and pick up Captain America. And I've always hated that. But it's been this gimmick from Marvel for like the past 20 years at this point that crossovers do well and they sell well because they force you to buy series you wouldn't normally read. And it's just it's really just exploiting the fans at this point. I, I've noticed that because like um, <clears throat> people often compare like comics to like male soap, soap operas because there is like a lot of in, like intrinsic lore that happens over decades and decades of information with with manga. It's less about, you know, who slept with who and who like an evil ex coming back or we have to defeat this guy because it's really just this, this guy in disguise or whatever. Um, it's less about that, and it's more of like a simpler story to keep up with. Um, because if I could, if I could, you know what they should have done. I think the really good example of how they should have managed these characters, because like that's a really good point. Like hundred, like what some of these characters have been around for like sixty, seventy, eighty years now, mm-hmm. and they just ignore a lot of this lore anyway. I think like the really good way to do this would be like uh, look at like Gundam or like. Tenshi Muyo, how they do like reboots and they just reboot all the characters. And just it's kind of like they kind of already did this with uh with Marvel did the Ultimate Universe. Remember that? Yeah. Where they had like a whole new universe. Should just like do these arcs and just reboot it every uh couple of years. I a lot of people don't like that idea, but I think that that would inject new life into it. I think people get really sick of it when it comes to the movies in particular, when they reboot everything. I think that's where like people's most their point of contention, not just like the comet specifically. Because well, they, I mean, the universes wouldn't go away. They could come back to them once in a while, but mm. they keep just telling, well, maybe that's, I mean, there's, this is a long conversation to have, but it's like, you know, now they, they just talk about ideology all the time. And if they're not doing that, they're kind of just retelling the same stories that they've already done. Sometimes it's like, what more can you do with these characters? Doing Art. political ideology with them isn't going to work. That's fucking. It's a horrible idea that just has not worked. Or when They're... they tried to, uh, if you were going to see Iron Man and you were going into the comic shop, well, let me check out an Iron Man comic. You got a comic book called Iron Man with a teenage black girl on it. You know, like that's not what people were looking for. And see, they're doing that same thing now, but with the movies and the TV shows. They're trying to transition over to what they're doing in the comic book world. And, I mean, thus far, it's not translating very well. Well, Black Widow just had uh, one of the worst second weekend drop-offs for a Marvel movie ever. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. I heard it bombed. I'm actually going to go see it after recording this episode. (laughs) I just watched Red Letter Media's review of it, (laughs) to be honest, and that was like... They downvoted the shit out. Like, the Marvel stands attacked it. No, 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 no. That was a meme. That was a meme. That was that was a plant. You fell for that obvious plant. So <laughs> at the very end, like the last two seconds, they were like, hey, let's get our fans to just like the shit out of this video. So they were oh. they, they did that. So oh, okay. So at a glance, you would be like, oh, Marvel movie fans are pissed. But honestly, it was just I their... didn't finish the whole video. Yeah, so, it was like okay. the last like two. two oh, that's funny. <laughs> OK, yeah, OK. Yeah, that's kind of funny. <laughs> because, like, I mean, Red Letter Media is, like, their like to dislike ratios are always, like, super, super high because their fans watch every one of their videos, so. Okay, well, that, that makes me feel a little bit better because I'm, I'm looking at that ratio. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, no. there's no way people really enjoyed that movie that much. And you could tell they because the word of mouth for that movie would have had to have been terrible for it to have such a drop-off. I think and Space I believe Jam... It, is having a better like <laughs> premiere week than uh fucking Marvel did. To be I honest, we were just talking yeah. about that before we started recording. Yeah. That Space Jam has beaten Black Widow and taken like, the number <laughs> one spot. <laughs> yeah, I I fucking hate LeBron James, so I don't, I don't know. I have HBO Max. I might just watch it to keep up on shit because it's free on HBO Max right now. So uh, we'll see. Wanna yeah, we've got it, it too. I might watch, I might uh, tune in. Rather watch some, some Gundam. Oh, yeah, go ahead and talk about that, because I saw you posted on Twitter that you're going back and you're really starting to hit, like, the universal century hard. Yeah, I always watch the alternate universes, because I never wanted to get into 
the universal century because from what i understand you have to watch everything if you want to know what's yes. going on and that the the first show the animation is rough so i picked up the the movie trilogy i'm gonna try and just get through it that way because i really want to watch z gundam and uh particularly the ms uh eighth team eighth ms team eighth ms yeah. team is fantastic and i love that... i love zeta and double zeta gundam the I hear like uh, zero or zero eight or is it eighty and eighty three are really good. Yeah, like, what's the one where you like see it from the citizens' perspective? Oh yeah, yeah, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like that one's supposed to be really good. So I want to watch all these, but I've just I've never wanted to get double O eighty War in the Pocket. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. But I've watched like Turn a Gundam, G Gundam, Gundam X. Like, I love Gundam G Wing. Gundam. Yeah, Wing. but I talked to somebody, Anime Matsuri, and was like, "Just watch the movie trilogy, and then you can get in all of these shows." If they are so, I've been buying. I have pretty much everything. So this is going to take me probably two months to watch all of this shit, but it's all good. Have you guys ever thought about um, building Gundams? Yeah, Finally. I have a couple. I've kind of started to dabble in that a little bit. Dude, those I have sets are the, so uh, expensive. Like, holy shit. Yeah, I have yeah. Uh, Death Scythe Hell Custom. I love... Like, Death Scythe was always my favorite, because Duo was always I've my got favorite. The, I've got the the Heavy Arms Master Custom. The, the Ooh, Master nice. Grace. Uh, for the one from Endless Waltz. Yeah, that's the one I have for Death Scythe. It's the Endless Waltz version. Okay, I love he Heavy Arms. It's probably my favorite Gundam. It's because I love guns. <laughs> yeah, that thing was a giant gun, you know. So like, I just love that Gundam. It's one of my favorite designs. I love that the chest just opens up and like just shoots missiles and all this shit. And one of my favorite fights of all the series I've seen was when uh, when Hiro Yui fights uh, the tall geese and he fights in the heavy arms. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah, I loved that fight. So there's there's a lot of that. I just that's one of the few that stuck with me plus I, I love red and i just love that color i always thought troa was really interesting you know because he he's not really troa right that whole uh the barton foundation plot line there yeah so that's really what know. made endless waltz great was really like going into his backstory and kind of starting to reveal a little bit more about him that you really didn't get in the main series Yeah. Yeah, a lot of that stuff. Gundam Wing is one of my favorite, probably one of my favorite series. Love Gundam Wing series. is really what got me into Gundam. Um, yeah, I was aware. Too. I was aware of it, but I didn't really like go into it until I saw Wing on uh, Cartoon Network, and I was like, "Oh yeah. man, this is awesome! I love this." Do you remember at night they would play it uncut? Do you remember that? Yeah, that was that was yeah. awesome. It was the mid tsunami, the midnight run, or whatever. Yep. Oh, that was good. I said, you guys like you guys should go to Japan and go to that like life size Gundam that's in, I forget, I think it's in Tokyo, but uh, it's yeah. huge. Have you guys I've seen that? Seen yeah, I've seen it. it looks amazing. It yeah, looks I've got amazing. a picture. I've got a funny picture that I I had to save immediately uh, as a reaction image. And let me see if I can go find it. <laughs> but it's the uh, oh here I found it. It's the uh, it's the giant Gundam, and they were doing like a little uh, hydraulics test. And they had the Gundam flip everyone <laughs> off. It was it was absolutely great. Here's the here's the image up on the screen. It's, it's oh, pretty based. Based. Japan. Who paid for that? I don't even know. Some rich businessman that loves Gundam built it. I would do that if I had multi billions of dollars. <laughs> I would do commission stupid shit like that. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I love Japan. I'd love to go to Japan, but I'm kind of at the point. I don't think you know what the way things are. They'll ever let me travel there. You can hope one day. Well, aren't they like the Olympics supposed to be still a thing? I don't know. I don't keep up with sports. I don't know. The only thing I've kept up with is the fact that the American basketball team is getting embarrassed and uh, the weight, female weightlifting competition. I'm waiting for our new champion to rise. Uh, Does it have a one. penis? Uh, <laughs> yes, I believe so. Yeah. Oh, fuck. And uh, rising up in more than one way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm really waiting for the trans men to hit WNBA, make that a little bit more interesting. You know, we get some of the more failed NBA players to transition over to the WNBA, and then they can be stars. That would be really oh. funny. 
<laughs> the only thing I've, I've kept up with sports is like apparently one like um uh, like a black chick who's a runner i for, i don't even know what the fuck running is like the the one oh, where you she smoked weed yeah she smoked weed and then she got yeah. kicked out and people were i don't think out. they should have kicked her out but yeah. i don't think so either i, I think that was I, I understand rules are rules but fuck i didn't she from what i understand she only smoked like one time and it was just of that month i don't know it There's doesn't not really even that if... much it decreases it, like your like your performance actually. I don't know like why it wouldn't make any relieving, difference. There's some pain relieving elements. I've worked out high before and uh you definitely can do a little bit more. Maybe that was just my experience. Cuz I mean I mean it is a pain reliever and I think that there's some like joint if you have like joint issues, I think it really I I'm not too much into what it actually has for benefits like that. I do know that it's a pain reliever for a lot of people. Yeah, it, no, I thought that was stupid. Uh, the stupidest thing, though, was like when people tried making a black woman race issue. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> like, it's not yeah. about race. It's that she broke the rules regardless. But uh, it's it's a stupid rule, especially because weed is getting legalized like it's going to get legalized pretty much all across the United States by the time we get old. Like it's, it's just is inevitably like, I don't know. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, it's legal. Well, you know, at the state level, it's legal where I'm at. It's nice. I like going to these stores and buying candy and, and I give like the vape pens, mm -hmm. which is all I like to use anymore. I had a, a not to be like weed the mouth show, but uh, I tried, I did try some California gummies and those shit that, 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 that is something that is intense. Like, cause uh, shitty weed over here in the south is is terrible. <laughs> it's terrible, but uh, the THC they put inside of gummies, California, holy shit! <laughs> I felt like I was in fucking space. They last a long time too. I eat a candy. I eat half a candy bar, and uh, it, I I almost don't like how long it lasts. It's like four or five hours. It's in yeah. It's kind of uncomfortable. You know, I would yeah. rather if, if I'm gonna smoke, I'd rather just do it like relaxing. I have nothing else better to do that night. Anyway, yeah, and so, uh, what, Japan's what... very strict. Uh, just to add one quick point to the end of this, uh, Japan is actually very, very strict as far as like travel rules oh, yeah. regarding uh, testing positive for weed or having it. Um, there's a lot of like uh, wrestlers oh, that you are banned from Japan. There. Yeah, there's a lot of wrestlers that are banned from going to Japan because they either like possessed it or were like caught with it in their system as they were trying to come into or leave the country. So yeah. So th I think that probably ties into it a little bit as well with the Olympics thing. I see the people saying rules are rules and it's like, I hear you, but it's like, I don't know. It's not like she was high while she was doing shit. Yeah. Since we're talking about uh, giant robots, I wanted to talk a little bit about Super Robot Wars 30 coming to the West on Steam. It looks it looks pretty good uh, if you guys are into like the turn based strategy stuff. I know so that's not some people's cup of tea, but I I like that stuff. Uh, I never I, got into them. Like like I we were saying before the stream started, I would like a robot fighting game with all of the different popular mechs. I that think pretty awesome. Why can't they do that if they make this game? Well, like, they had I, uh, a Koei Tecmo and released that uh, Gundam uh, Gundam Dynasty Warriors game. And I loved that game. That was so awesome. I wish that we could have like a Super Robot Wars game that was in that sort of style. I would like to see a fighting. If did you ever play on the Super Nintendo? They had Gundam fighting games, and they weren't that bad. Yeah, I had the, uh, the Gundam Wing one. Yeah, yeah, I played. I don't know if I played because the one I played had different suits in it from different genres, but it had uh, Wing Zero in it. I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. I think they they should make a Gundam flight simulator almost where it's like you feel like you're piloting the actual Gundam inside of it. You get to tinker around with it like you're like IRL piloting. I think that would be pretty based. They sort of did I that know. with That'd the Xbox cool, with uh, this game called Steel Battalion, where you had yeah, I remember to buy that. This like two hundred dollar controller. This like two hundred dollar controller with like pedals yeah. and everything and dials. Steel Battalion. Steel Battalion, yeah. I always want to. I might try. I love never to got track to play that, that down. Game. I wonder how much that goes for now. I'd love to track that down and try it because oh, I don't wow. think there's been anybody that's ever replicated that. That is a very intricate controller. I Isn't will it say. amazing? Holy shit! 
A uh, sealed battalion never opened an original shipping box, Capcom. It runs for four thousand dollars. No. Well, never yeah. mind. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Uh damn. Yeah, there's the controller. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. I remember that. I w- I wanted it. It was like two hundred bucks. It was like two hundred dollars. I want to say is the price when that came out. And you know, fuck, I couldn't afford that. Almost nobody could. That's why it was yeah. considered a commercial <laughs> failure. Yeah, Why did no one ever made it's it? A shame. No one ever made it. It's a shame, though, because that controller. I wish they would like that. Was it's such a good, idea, but it is so niche. You know, how many people would buy that? I mean, if I had the money, I would. and I think that was the thing is that everyone would have bought it if it wasn't so expensive because everybody wants to pilot a Gundam. That is the fact of life. If you ask people that know what Gundam is, like, hey, do you want to pilot a Gundam? Hell yeah, I want to pilot I a Gundam. I would get in the fucking robot. I would yeah. get in the fucking robot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, uh, I guess you could, like, you could make a cheaper version of that nowadays with our you know, technology. But, like, I feel like just using a keyboard would probably suffice. Because I feel like that's how most people play Flight Simulator, right? It's just that you just use your little keyboard. Yeah, but it doesn't look as cool as that. That's true. Or they could make like um this would probably be an even bigger waste of money, but they would could make a um like a what's it called like a oh fuck I'm I'm brain farting but the uh the, those giant uh, well <laughs> arcade arcade machine like a arcade giant machine, arcade machine yeah. yeah arcade cabinets yes <laughs> I don't know why what's with my brain today there I'm was sorry, a Star Wars game good. like that we'd have you'd have to get like there's actually that could because the arcade one up sell I have like five of them. Have you That's seen really the cool. have you seen the fucking quartering basement? He's got every single one of them. He's basically turned his basement into like an arcade, uh just a full on arcade. It's cool. I yeah. would do something like that, except I'd probably buy weeb games, which are mostly just dance dancing games. <laughs> I would I would definitely buy those kind of games. Did you own a uh, Dance Dance Revolution pad with your PlayStation? Uh, I I did not. My sister owned one for like the Wii. And I played on that. But um, actual dance dance games, like the actual arcade machines, are way harder to play. (laughs) And they're way more fun. Me and Flamingo actually played on one because we went to a barcade in um, Knoxville. We went to Bubba Fest. Well, I went to to that also. Yes, we met. I I went to that. Well, I mean that arcade that you're talking about there. Oh, the barcade in Knoxville? Yeah, I went there. Oh, Uh, wow. It was pretty cool. Damn, I wish I had known that place existed when we went to Knoxville for the uh, for the Tonka Worski fight. I would have God, totally that gone was, there. That is uh, over two years ago. I know. I was also there. It blows my mind that it's been that long. All the, There's all so of much this... shit that's happened. Oh God. <laughs> it's crazy because anyway. that was about the same time that like the Vic stuff was going on too. It was that that event? And it's yeah, just... it was right around the that was around the the peak time of it. Around because a little bit before that was Anime Matsuri of that year too. Why don't you talk about Anime Matsuri? I, you went. Uh, Nick Ricada was there. Vic was there. Those lines. I saw the pictures. Wow. Yeah, Vic's line was busy the whole time. The whole that's, time. That's what it's like meeting Vic Mignotta, man. Like you could very well stand there for two to three hours just to get to meet Vic. It's kind of insane, actually. It was like that both at Bubba Fest and Matsuri. Two or three hours. Although Bubba Fest was like a, more cramped, too, because there was like even bigger name celebrities that were there, too, because there was some... Um, yeah. Um, you, had Lo- you had Game of Thrones people there. Yeah. Um, you had a lot of... Because uh, it's, uh, you know, a Southern con. They had a lot of Southern stars. I think like that racer... Fuck, what's his name? Rich Is it Richard Petty? There was Wasn't the... Uh, Richard Petty, yeah. I think there he was, was there. The guy who, uh, what's his name? Uh, is it Chuck? Uh, what's his name? The guy, karate guy? With yeah. The... Uh, it's, it's, it's Our brain, or, my brain is just fried today. I don't know Chuck what's with Norris. Me. Chuck oh, Norris. Chuck Norris. Yes, Chuck. Walker, he was Texas there. Ranger. Yeah. He had, when he was there, his line was crazy too. Like, I think he had the biggest one out of all of them because I, I don't know if it was the Southerners loving Chuck Norris, but uh, we, we loved him Chuck Norris. I don't know. It's because every <laughs> Southerner is required to watch Walker, Texas Ranger at least once. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, my parents liked that show. I never I never got into it. 
Yeah, that that is a, a good summary of like what Vic Mignogna's lines like. I think right behind that, where someone's taking that photo, was a uh, really expensive statues. I happened to like. I was watching Nick Rakita's stream, and I think they had like these like ten thousand dollar statues, like figures. And they were roped off, like insanely expensive, like life size. What statues were they of? I don't know. Only guy got like a glance at them. I'm sure if you tried finding them hard enough, you could find them. But they were. They were so expensive, they had to be roped off. Like, you couldn't see them, like, face to face. Yeah, they didn't want people touching those things because they're yeah. that expensive. I can't imagine the shipping costs on one of them because they were, like, huge. Vic had a giant uh, statue of Broly holding Goku's face in his fist at his table. It was really amazing. That had to be... That had to have cost at least two or $3,000, I would imagine. That was mm-hmm. probably one of the coolest statues I've ever seen. It was big, real big, not life size or anything, but fuck, you put it on a table, you know, no one would miss it. How hot was it in Houston? It wasn't too bad. I didn't go off and travel around. Like we, one night, a couple of us went to this bar a little bit away, but for the most part, you know, we were indoors most of the time. It wasn't too bad, but it is muggy, really muggy. It's like last year in Matsuri. Well, I say last year. I meant two years ago, 2019. Jesus. It's, it's almost like 2020 just. It was such a forgettable year. So much shit happened at the same time, but it, like nothing happened. So I. My timeline is a little bit fucked up. So 2019, Matsuri, it rained. But oh my God, when it rains in Houston, it pours. Like it was flooding by the time we got there. Like it was about 20 minutes between our Airbnb and like the actual um, place where it took like Matsuri's at. So we drove there and it was just like, like six inches of rain popped out of nowhere. I'm not even exaggerating. Like it was insane. Because it's like, Houston's like, it's close to the ocean, right? And it's really yep. flat and really low. The port city. I didn't even yeah. know that until... uh until I think Nick showed us and he was showing us like, cause it's right there. You know, I didn't even mm-hmm. know that until, uh, until we talked about it. Cause yeah, when you can... think Texas, you don't think port city or, you know, like yeah. right by the ocean, but you kind of forget how close Houston is to the ocean, how big of a city it actually is. Cause yeah. Houston's huge. It's the size of Rhode Island. Like it's huge. But I stayed close to the con because fuck city crime is, way up and uh i didn't feel like you know <laughs> yeah getting into some kind of altercation with somebody didn't feel like chancing it, it yeah so i stayed close to where everybody was yeah when we went to that one bar we went to uh we went with a, a nice little group though and there's a couple of us that are you know like pretty tall and pretty big so no one was i didn't really think anyone was gonna fuck with us it wouldn't have been the wisest decision you know there's a like threatening you guys before no, like they're no, like we're gonna but, kick your ass in matsuri no no i i had no worries about that i was thinking more of when we walked to, the one time we ventured out to a bar like you know a, we had to walk a little ways to get there that the only the only time i was thinking about it then was because of crime in cities because you know everyone's defunding their cops and cops are quitting so crime's up in houston just like any other city i see you don't want to get mugged and all that i yeah. see See, here's the difference between Anime Matsuri and Otakon. Otakon has canceled their made cafes, but apparently Anime Matsuri, it still happened. Wait, why did they cancel it? Because of, uh, you know, the pandemic or whatever. Yeah, they had a rave on Saturday night. I didn't go to it, but I guess there was a a big crowd for it. Yeah, there's some pictures pictures of it on uh, on their Instagram. But they had, uh, you know, panels all day, every day, and it was just like going to a normal con. It was nice. It felt like, you know, actual life again. Yeah, I'm I'm so glad the mask mandate has been lifted in most places, except for like California, California, I think L.A. specifically. They're starting to like crack down again, but that's that's L.A. <laughs> Fuck L.A. So, man, I, I, still, I still wore one. I, well, when I was in costume, I was wearing one. But anytime we, uh, you know, weren't around Vic or something, I was just dressed normally. It was nice. Uh, is this a rave? Or they just, yeah, this they is just the look rave. like they're oh, just the anime Matsuri? around. <laughs> yeah, that's at Anime Matsuri. They did a, a panning shot of the crowd there. 
Yeah, I, I didn't go. I had no interest in going to that. <laughs> Zero. Be around a bunch of sweaty weebs standing around pretending the party with their light I sticks. I don't be around any sweaty people in a clothes. My time at these kinds of things are done. How was the smell, though? Was it stinky? Was it putrid? No, that's such a... Well, I take it back. There are one or two people that stunk, but there's <laughs> always people that stink everywhere. Generally, nowadays, uh, conventions are really, really, really on about people not taking showers because back in, like, the heyday of when I was going to anime conventions, that had, like, become a serious problem because you had people... You, <sighs> Well, it's just... more mainstream now. It's not like it yeah. was, you know, not even 10 years ago. It's anime is very mainstream now. Very mainstream. It's yeah, not like can, this little ask... niche thing anymore. Yeah, you can just ask people on the street. And most of the time, more often than not, I'd say like 70% of the time, if you ask them about like simple stuff like Pokemon, they would probably be like, oh, yeah, I know what Pokemon is. Or even, like, uh, Dragon Ball Z. Like, yeah, yeah, I know what Dragon Ball Z is. Well, Dragon Ball Super is, is trending on Twitter right now. Is it really? Oh, really? Yeah, God of Destruction is. Because, oh, did they of course, release some news? Vegeta, there's a Vegeta God of Destruction form now. The Man. manga's been going for a while. He looks like Super Saiyan 3. Hold on, I'll put it in chat. I still read the manga. They Every month you get a new chapter. It's I do not too. that good. Oh, I see it. It's not that good. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this uh this current storyline with uh with like the people that were like defeated by the Saiyans or whatever, and they've they've like tricked this guy into trying to kill Goku. Here's here's here it is. I'll bring it up on yep. the screen here. That's God of Destruction, Vegeta. So, you know, a new toy, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point of that. Yeah. I don't know if and like I'll, I'll probably honestly buy it. Do do Dragon Ball Z Blu-rays sell very well? Do yeah, you think? They, oh, I would yeah. say so. They well, they look at how much. All you got to do is to look how much they reissue it. They milk the fuck out of that series. I mean, right now they have uh, four by three steel books for sale that have been coming out. Mm. And the big deal on that is, well, now it's in four by three. Like it should have been the entire fucking time. Yeah, I kind of assume the video games sell better than like the Blu-rays and all that. I mean, that's just me assuming, but because like it's like every like couple years there's a new Dragon Ball Z fighting game, and they sell they sell really really well. People love them. Yeah, this series. I'm wait. You know they're gonna come out with a 4K version and all this stuff. I mm -hmm. I'm done. I have the whole series. I'm not buying it again. <laughs> I'm not doing it, man. I mean, you can't make me buy it all over. You can't make me spend two hundred dollars in a Blu-ray set again. Fuck that. Well, you know how Funimation, Funimation does. Money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they always do this too, every single time. And now that they're owned by Sony, you know, you you pull in Aniplex and all these other Sony owned owned properties and everything. And you know, I think that's a really good uh, segue point into one of the things I want to talk about next, which is uh, Sony has really gone all in on censoring anime games and it's just just anime oh, yeah. games for some reason like you know last of us 2 you can have uh you know uh how do i say this without immediately demonetizing you can have a podcast. sex scene yes there you go yeah you can have a, a depiction of nudity in last of us 2 but you can't show minato namikaze's arm being ripped off in a video game and it's insane. You can't show uh, Atelier Ryza's thighs, but you can show like almost full nudity in a. Well, Sony even at a, that's that point you brought up about the arm. They had a, uh, I think it was the last Naruto Shippuden fighting game. The the fourth Hokage, he loses his arms. Did did you watch Naruto Shippuden? Do you read it or yes. anything? You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I watched. So you remember he loses his moment. arms. Mm -hmm. Remember, he loses his arms uh, in the game. They they didn't take his arms away, and it was from what I remember. I'm not 100 percent sure on it, so you'd have to follow it up if you wanted to. But I believe Sony told them they didn't want uh, that kind of imagery. They didn't want him losing his arms. But it's, yeah, it was Cyber it's Connect CEO uh, Hiroshi Matsuyama actually confirmed 
that Sony was the one that told them not to do that. And they had a yeah. similar controversy with uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. And this is happening to like, like uh, I mentioned Atelier Ryza, but it's becoming more and more common. Yeah, the thighs. yeah, with all of these anime games that like they're going back in and they're they're censoring. And, you know, we're seeing that a lot now with Funimation, too. Like beforehand, you know, no one wanted to watch the dubs because you know, especially for the second tier anime, like usually with like their main stuff, it's usually fine. But like their second and third tier stuff, like the like the waifu anime or like the really mm-hmm. fan service or the isekai and stuff like that that they do, they tend to throw a bunch of like stupid, pointless localizations in the dub references to feminism and harassment and stuff like Gamer that. Gamergate. Yeah, <laughs> that was right. weird in, in fucking prison school. Yeah, that was so stupid. But uh, they they did that in the dubs. And so you just said, well, I'm just not going to watch the dubs. I'm just going to watch the subtitles. And now, as we saw with Nagatoro, they're slowly but surely starting to localize the subs more and more, too. And not like the, the cool localization back in the day, like with uh, Gunsmith Cats, where they actually made it better by localizing it. They're just throwing in, like, really stupid references to feminism and ma- empowerment and ma- harassment and ma- male gaze and all of this stuff into the subtitles, too, to try to make the, the dubs and the subs match. And it's just, it's, it's cringy. Uh, the big controversy over Nagatoro was they, they changed you're acting suspicious, you're acting weird, to you're acting sus for the, the Amoogus meme. <laughs> <laughs> when are we gonna have a Nagatora Amoongus mod? Come on. <laughs> Where you just you dress up as a little tan like uh you know astronaut creature with like I don't know, pigtails or something. You get to bully it. <laughs> Instead of like killing, you just bully the shit out of everyone. Unironically, yeah. that would probably sell really well. <laughs> I mean weebs would love it, man. People are like, weebs love like I want a mommy GF that bullies and steps on me. Did you guys hear about that in the Matsuri about a girl like stepping on people? Yes. She had a sign up say, I'll step on you for free. Was she attractive? Um nah. Yeah, uh, was she weeb attractive? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> And, you know, people like that shit, though, so. Yeah. I thought it was funny. I don't know. I thought it was pretty funny. I'm going to talk about this tonight on my stream, too, but the, you know, did you see the, did you see what was it? The So there was this cosplay girl there. I don't know who she is, but she was a big part of the hentai stuff at Enemy Montserrat. Mm-hmm. And somebody sent out fake emails saying that she's going to raffle off full service sex. What? <laughs> he would be giving hand jobs and blow jobs in the, uh, <laughs> in the That's uh, weird. I remember Nick talking section. about this because he was, was pointing fake. out how fucking stupid people were for actually believing that shit. I got to admit, I thought it was kind of funny, but people were taking this seriously because anime news network, I guess reported on this Ugh, fuck them. as being like almost a real thing. Mars girl was saying, I'm not sure if this is true, but if it is trying to wreck enemy Matsuri. Are they trying to say we should allow sex work in anime Matsuri? We should allow people to prostitute themselves. Is this what, am I getting that right? They should, they should allow people to prostitute themselves at anime cons. I mean, it's an anime yeah. con. That thing kind of, kind of happens. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. about it. You know, you got a lot of pent up weebs all together. Well, I mean, look at just the the stories that have have come out. You know, from the these accusations against Vic. Like you go, you go back and you start looking into some of these characters, and some of these people have a track record, and that track record is not hidden. That track record has been discussed numerous times uh uh jay montello all these people they have a track record they have a history uh so pull pull's another great example of oh, just yeah, pull. yeah. <laughs> they've they've all got track records you know the conventions like before they really became mainstream they were kind of this like wretched hive of scum and villainy if you just walk to the wrong part of the convention they were absolute degeneracy didn't pole get shut down 
They did finally, yeah. Um, I'm not sure specifically like what happened if they just decided to pull the plug or if they just didn't have the money anymore. But yeah, it went down. I guess they all went back to uh, CGL or whatever. I, I figured they all went to Lockout because what... So I used to browse CGL kind of often back in high school because I, I would mostly read it because what they would do... So they they really monitored the crap out of it and they made it not as fun as it used to be. So CGL used to be more of a gossip form because it used to be ran by fat Lolitas. And fat Lolitas are subhumans. So these subhumans would just do nothing but talk <laughs> shit about other J fashion cosplay people around the scene. And they would always have like uh, cosplay horror stories that involved rape. And if they ever involved rape, I just assumed that they were lying most of the time. You know, so some of them are true, but most of them are just like, you know, they're lying, right? So, you but that, that's that's what it used to be. And then in like a lot of people, because as they started moderating the crap out of it, like I said, they moved to pull in uh, Log Hell so they could talk shit about people. Speaking of rape. Hot. <laughs> Isn't it funny? What did you what did you think of that statistic that the the creative redo of Healer put out that's like all women that love that show? It's, I, uh, I think it. it's. I think it's mostly. I, I think what it was was like <clears throat> mostly women. Mostly women, yeah. That's watch like, it and like yeah. it. And uh, he was like, "Well, all women love rape, don't you?" <laughs> <laughs> I love that he's my my mutual. He, like, I don't really get super excited when people follow me, but I, I lost it. I was so happy when he followed me. Reduce, reduce author. <laughs> I'd uh, uh, love to get him on our show because we reviewed every episode. I don't know if he can speak English is the only thing. Oh, is that it? That might be mm. a problem. You'd have to get like a translator on and then figure out his schedule because he lives in opposite times. So Yeah, that'd be that'd be too hard to pull through. <laughs> but it'd be great but, if you could like uh like maybe conduct like an interview or something like that at some point. That would be kinda neat. And then just like play it on your show. I was really did did you see that like it seems like all of the Twitter weirdos and, and stuff, they just Decided universally, we're just not going to talk about this show. <laughs> because oh, yeah, when they were talking about up. it, when they yeah. were talking about it, they boosted it to like the number one selling anime. Yeah, yeah, I find it weird that uh, Mother's Basement. I don't know if you know who that Gaylord is. Oh, uh, Flash. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've heard of him. He's he's a fucking weirdo. So like, Mother's Basement made a whole video basically saying how. Goblin Slayer was actually erotic with its rape scene and how it made him horny. And that was bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. He went to grand detail about why the rape scene in Goblin Slayer was made specifically to get off to. Like he he made out he he pointed out because I watched it recently, like a few weeks ago, because I was like, huh, I wonder how well this aged. Didn't age very well at all. So I, I watched it again. And he went into very graphic details about how because they were getting their clothes ripped off and you could see like the edge of their butts and boobs, right? That was that was horny posting. And so just, just obviously that that's gonna happen when you get raped, right? <clears throat> so uh yeah, that was a really piss poor decision on his part. And then this this anime, the whole point of it is it's it's rape. It's rape the anime. Like it's it's I mean, let's be honest, it's fetish. Every cool. episode there's they find a reason to put some sex or rape mm -hmm. in it like because there's one episode that i didn't think was going to have any i don't remember which one it is it's when they get to that town where the humans and the monsters live together yeah and there's like oh we're not gonna have any sex in this episode but like right at the end they find a way <laughs> they always yeah, it, always insert it into every episode somehow it, some way it's yeah. fetish fuel at the end i mean it's schlocky fetish fuel at the end but i like it because it's so shocking and it's like it's funny it's it's a funny anime if you just like realize what you're watching and you just kind of kick back and you're like okay this is so ridiculous i can't i can't not laugh at this not, and that's the whole there's... point is that it's supposed to be over the top ridiculous and, and the author doesn't try to hide it or anything no he yeah. he's Comes off as so charming. <laughs> I liked him in that Joey interview he did with the anime man. I, I, he, he came off as great, but like it's weird because Joey was uh, shitting on Rita Vikiller before. He thought it was fucking stupid, but then all of a sudden when he got an uh, advertisement from High Dive to do that interview, he wasn't shitting on it as much. Hmm, big to think, huh? Anime man, fake piece of shit. 
<laughs> Did he kill his family? I think I've recently learned this. Wait, who? Oh, no, that's Mr. Anime. <laughs> that's a completely different person. If you're, that's what oh, you're thinking. Of. Okay. <laughs> no, the anime. <laughs> <laughs> the anime man, his name is Joey, and he's Australian, and he lives in uh, Jap- Jap- Japan. He's half Japanese, and he'll oh, okay. up. He, he had to move there so he could actually watch this stuff then, huh? Well, no. Well, he is in Australia. They I think Australia's they banned like like 90% of all anime. Yeah. He might have. I don't know. Well, either way, but Mr. Uh, Mr. Anime is the one that was a serial killer. Okay. So, I right. feel like. I feel like Joey Joey has come to that realization and has really regretted his name, the Anime Man, because it's very <laughs> similar to Mister Anime. Yeah, but I didn't know. Uh, I didn't hear about this until like a couple of days ago. It's like, mm. whoa, that's not cool. No, no, it's yeah, it's not cool to be a serial <laughs> killer. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> oh yeah, like um, I would have it, expected it, happened... it to be uh, Quentin before. <laughs> so that's there's Quentin. a shock there. Oh, Quentin Reviews, man. I don't know. Do you know if I quit in Reviews, Flash? No, I don't think I've ever... I try to avoid the community as much as possible. That's fair. To be honest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is most of them, from my experience, are a bunch of uh, just, you know, we don't agree on, I'm sure, a l- many an issue. Well, like, I- uh, I'm sure. Speaking of Lindsay Ellis, like we did before, he uh, essentially, well, he he made his claim to fame by talking about Garfield, which is fine. I like I like Garfield, but then like something all of a sudden just changed in him whenever Trump got reelected or got elected. He was just like he was being a pussy about it. He was like, guys, I really hate Trump. And he slams his desk like, guys, I just I hate Trump. And he just gets like kind of really weirdly angry but like in like the most pussified way that you could be angry that's the only way i could describe it so he's been like he's been um clout chasing political people like contra and all those people ever since but he he really liked Lindsay a lot and he got her dms and she exposed him for not him and movie bob for not getting the picture of uh i don't want to talk to you leave me alone because they would constantly egg her on, be like, hey, Lindsay, hey, Lindsay, we should collab, we should do this. Oh, you're at this con? Please hang out with me. Hey, Lindsay, hey, Lindsay. And she's like, no, this is creepy. So, yeah. Yes. There's a lot of guys that I don't think that understand. Like, they just don't get it. Or it's like, I think you can kind of just get the hint. Most people, maybe it's autism or something. <laughs> you know, like, isn't that the whole thing? They just don't get it. Yeah. Get social cues and stuff. Probably it's like, autism. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Uh-huh. Maybe they're autistic. There's just a high chance that a lot of YouTubers are autistic. <laughs> I mean, come to find out. Oh, yeah, did you find the was, DMs? Yeah, I found <laughs> the DMs where he just like would constantly message her over and over and over again. And what was so funny yeah, about these, this? July 12th, September 8th, September 10th. Like, okay, you didn't get a response anywhere in those times. Maybe just, you know, go away now. That's you so know, sad. If I'm in town, if you're free, if not, I totally understand. Hey, sorry, never mind. Like, like about it, like a few minutes later. That's so fucking sad. And this or no, a day later. Pathetic. It's a day later. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this this just looks pathetic. That that probably wasn't helping his chances already. You know. <laughs> Guess how they figured out? Because she didn't re- she didn't reveal it was Quentin. Guess how people found out that she was talking about Quentin. People compared. The little tiny sliver at the bottom, the very bottom of the page there, that little tiny sliver right there that you can see. They compared it and overlaid it over (laughs) a picture of Quentin. (laughs) And that's how they figured out it was him. (laughs) Now, that's kind of autistic in itself, too, to be able to use that tiny sliver to find this shit. Yeah, but... (laughs) But it's autism so breeds more autism, man. Yeah, it sure does, huh? <laughs> God bless them. And that's just yeah. really it's going back into it, just like avoiding the rest of the community because this is what you get. <laughs> this is this is these people, the the people that you know orbited around Channel Awesome and that guy with the glasses, Lindsay Ellis, Mars Girl. Like this is. This is who they are. This is the kinds of people that they are. Yeah, no, for real. These like red tuber types. Like it's it's weird. There's like a pipeline between like, like you get like the channel. Also, like first of all, you get um, 
angry nerd, right? Angry nerd. And then you have Channel Awesome. And the people they bred was either they had the Jontrons or the weird bread tubers. Like Mars Girl and Lindsay Ellis and Quentin. Those kind of weirdos. Most of them turned out to be bread tubers. Like they, they really just manifested pussified leftism on their YouTube channel. And I mean, they're all financially successful people, except for Mars Girl. <laughs> Cause like, <laughs> right. Because <laughs> like Lindsay is a multimillionaire. Um, I mean, I'm sure Quentin is on his way to being like a, a millionaire at one point. Like, and you have people like well, Fauci's a millionaire. Well, like, like, all these people are multimillionaires. And I recently found out that H. Barmer guy was a multimillionaire too. I didn't know, didn't know anything about him, but I watched his video last night and I was like, this is like the most boring shit I think I've ever seen on YouTube. And somehow people love this dude. I, I, I don't think well, they it's love very... him because he was one of the first people that like really had like hardcore trolls remorse and like tried to renounce like all of the bad things that he did when he was a mean and evil troll on the Medicare. Him and Jim used to actually fuck with each other back in the day. Like it, like it goes yeah, way on the back. Medicare forums. Yeah. It's weird. In fact, yeah, that's uh, one of the reasons why he calls himself Mr. Medicare was because he doesn't want H Bomber Guy and Haberman to ever forget that, that the Medicare forums existed. I don't watch any bread tubers. You shouldn't. You don't. You, you don't want brain rot. <laughs> Seems like they just uh, grift off people's names, pretty much. That's the kind of the gist I got off of it. I don't understand the point because, like, I mean. You're they, it's it's such a crazy time right now politically. Like people are so like you're not gonna people are very like kind of dug in right now on their opinions. You know, I just don't see that none of them have ever actually damaged anybody. And like their favorite punching bag, they always go after the quartering and they don't get any they don't nothing has stopped his momentum, you know. Mm-hmm. No, you, all you get are his down. detractors. You get his detractors. That's it. And honestly, bread tubers like, and quartering you... detractors. I, I will say, quartering fans and bread tubers really love arguing with each other, like nonstop on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what's so, so uh, what's so funny about it is the fact that like you have guys like H three H three Ethan Klein going yeah. after quartering. Like, what extra viewers are you gonna get from like starting a feud with the quartering? If anything. You just bring yeah, you're more not gonna people get any to watch his, him. Yeah. You're not going to get anybody to go over there that, you know, oh, I'm going to change my mind now. Like, people are so politically divided right now. There's just, I you think, know, there's just nothing that's going to happen from I, that. I think with Ethan Klein, because um, I think with his new audience that he has made, because I, I blame Trisha Paytas with a lot of his, like, his Ethan was already going down this kind of line, but, like, Trisha Paytas really put the uh, nail on the head with the kind of, type a personality fan audience like the t channel audience that he collected like the people who like to be like that's problematic and so now he has to like moral fig i don't want to say the actual word moral fig for all these people to make it seem like he's better than people like the courting because i'm sure he's like there's nothing financially to gain from it it's just like it's just a way to make himself feel better because he is actually a really like terrible fucking person that uses people and is cop chasing and um doesn't care about anyone other than maybe himself maybe his family but that's about it and you know to notice that kind of sociopathic pattern behavior if you've just been watching him for a while so this is just his way of like trying to come off as moral su- morally superior and you can see the difference in the content that they produce like like if you when you ever you watch anything that Ethan Klein produces you can really tell that he kind of doesn't want to be there. He kind of doesn't really enjoy what he's doing. Like, there's been episodes where he, like, really loves it, but usually it's because he's, like, fucking with Trisha Paytas and getting her to, like, freak out. And he enjoys that. But in what general... What do you think the point of someone like him, if he doesn't enjoy it, continuing is? Because the dude's a millionaire. Like, if I was a millionaire and I'm just not into it, like, why wouldn't you just quit? You know, what, do you, what else do you need? Like, how I much mean, more these, money do you need? Like, he can live enjoy, in a mansion and drink margaritas and Mai Tais outside by his pool for the rest of his life. I think these people enjoy, like, the power aspect of it, too, because, like, Ethan Klein has so much power behind the scenes that I'm sure we don't even know, like, the gist of it, because he's highly connected with Susan. Susan Majewski. Hello, Susan, if you're listening to this. Um, and he, I mean, he complained about Leafy is here. 
And, and then he was banned. gone. And then he got beat, yeah. like banned. And they're like, oh, because he made fun of Pokimane. So, like, he didn't say anything that would get you banned other than saying she was like a two out of 10 or whatever. He didn't call yeah. her a, a fat whore or to kill herself. Like, he didn't say anything like that. But that was enough. When after Ethan Klein complained about Leafy somehow after his connections with YouTube, and he he brags about how highly connected he is, Leafy got banned. Yeah, yeah. And, I don't think I don't think it's a coincidence. And well, remember when him and Keemstar like, were beefing? Keemstar basically yeah. got told he's no longer allowed to make content about Ethan Klein anymore. And this was after. He released like three or uh, Ethan Klein released like three separate videos about Keemstar and Keemstar was the one that was told, no, you're not allowed to respond to this anymore. Yep. I, th I think the only reason Keemstar was not banned like Leafy is because Keemstar is highly connected and highly influential and highly profitable because Keemstar yeah, they is make a, business a ton of money off of him. Keemstar is a businessman first and foremost before a YouTuber. You can tell by his like lazy content, <laughs> but he is well versed within the YouTube sphere, and that's the only reason they gave Keemstar a slap on the wrist. Leafy is not. Leafy makes his money doing other things that have nothing to do with YouTube, and so they didn't need him, and he didn't need YouTube, and so they kicked him out real fast. And plus, they already like he he was already like shadow banned really bad um, during the 2016 era because. A lot of people don't give Leafy enough credit. He evolutionized the 2016 banter that was really popular amongst the com commentary community during that time. Because like it was that kind of revamp of edginess that was getting pushed out of the internet. And then they just kind of silenced him. So, I mean, and then they got rid of him completely. Like, what was it, last year? So... Yeah, when he came back and just started, like, dunking on everybody. He showed up for, like, I think it was maybe a month, and then YouTube just pulled the plug, like, immediately. Yeah, I know it was bullshit. It was complete bullshit. And nowadays, people are just getting their channels pulled uh, for just no reason at all. Yeah, like the, they have a weird bot scary. system now. <laughs> it's scary. Uh, you never know when you're just going to be, like, like, making content, and all of a sudden, you know, the YouTube bots have determined that they're just going to pull your entire channel and you're going to have to fight with uh, team YouTube on Twitter, beg them to yeah, take a look you, at and it. It's like, it's so bullshit because you can't, you have to make a fucking Twitter and interact with the YouTube staff on Twitter. You can't even email them or like call them up. Like most, like most um, companies do, you know, you just call them up their customer service or whatever, and email them and they respond back. No, you have to make a fucking Twitter or have a Twitter Make sure they know it's you and say, hey, my YouTube channel has been blah, 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 blah. And then maybe maybe they'll respond. Maybe. I mean, most, most websites not, have so. like support tickets or things like that. But YouTube like and there's a reason that they do it this way. They do it this way so that if you're somebody they don't like somebody that they want gone, you can't like bug them. They can just ignore you and you're just, you know, deplatformed forever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's shitty. So now you have to fight to like, you know bleep out certain words if you want your videos to be monetized you've got to like be very careful about the way in which you portray things or the topics that you talk about you've got to like that that fine line is getting thinner and thinner and thinner like pretty soon i feel like the types of content that we make where we're just like you know criticizing people's ridiculous reactions to anime and comics and the industries themselves and stuff like that i feel like you know, that may be like the next frontier where it's like, oh, well, we don't like you criticizing these movies, these comic books. And so now here's a bunch of extra guidelines about what's considered criticism and what's not considered fair criticism. That's bullying. You can't bully billion dollar corporation. Come on. Hopefully, hopefully Odyssey will take off and then we won't have to worry about it. I hope so. I, I really like what they've got going over there. It's it's nice yeah. to have uh, it's nice to have an alternative where if YouTube decides that your video doesn't meet their their standards, that you have another place where you can get a second opinion. I've got a lot of their coin. <laughs> I just have it sitting there. I haven't done anything with it because I've been on there since uh, I think oh, I don't. I think I joined last summer. I joined Honesty. Yeah, and it's really starting to take off now. Um, they've got a lot of people over there that are mirroring all of their content so that. You know, in yeah, case the worst, yeah, in case the worst happens, you've got you've got those videos over there on Odyssey. 
so you don't have to worry if YouTube takes it down. Oh, well, I guess I'll just send the link to the Odyssey version of the video to everybody on my Twitter feed. Yeah, I like I like Odyssey. One other quick thing about the Odyssey stuff is that pretty soon they're supposed to be uh, like they've got the payment system in place for uh, like U.S. dollar super chats. The only problem is that they don't have like the actual functionality to attach a message to it. So people can pay you. Oh. They just like can't put the message on there, but they're supposed to be getting like they'll, actual they'll get super that going. Chats. Yeah. I was watching your guys's live stream yesterday over there. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. You, uh, I don't know. Remember what you guys were talking about. I was watching it while I was working on some stuff, but, uh, I saw the super chats coming in. I saw that it, uh, it was working pretty good. Yeah, they, they've done a lot. And a lot of it's been, you know, just us kind of like poking them and prodding them being like, hey, when is this feature going to happen? When is this feature going to happen? And it's it's amazing just like what they've been able to do in like the span. I think we've been streaming on there for maybe one and a half months. And they've made like tremendous progress over there to the point that we basically switched the show over exclusive to Odyssey now. That's where we live stream with the you know, the typical YouTube restreams and it's, it's done very well. So, you know, I hope Odyssey continues to grow and really starts to become a true viable alternative to YouTube. Cause you know, you never know when the day will finally come that they decide that, uh, you know, criticism is, is, <laughs> is no longer allowed. You can't criticize anything anymore. Yeah. I'm that day's coming. So. Yeah. I can't, criticize space jam and how it's just literally a giant commercial for shoes fuck <laughs> it is <laughs> for shoes and for uh warner brothers media yeah i'm looking uh, i'm remember I'm how they gonna... had sorry remember uh, they made a big deal about pepe Le Pew, but the clockwork orange guys are still there yeah oh yeah exactly. the actual <laughs> rapist are there <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. That's interesting. I didn't think about it that way, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to watch that tonight. And uh, I'll, I don't know, maybe we can talk about that the next episode about how everything's gay, it ruins your childhood. Even though, like, the first Space Jam, the first Space Jam was fucking stupid and it was kind of bad, but uh, I don't know, it had its own charm to it. Very uh, 90s. Well, charm. Michael Jordan was very loved, still loved. You mm-hmm. know, he had all these characters in it. It, it was one of the few movies that they even have done that because what what was before that? Who Framed Roger Rabbit? And... That's one of my favorite movies ever. That's I a love that that's movie. a fantastic movie. That's a great movie, and you'll never see a movie like that ever again because Disney loaned out their characters, which was crazy. Still crazy to this day to think about. Well, I think that was before um, they hit their. I think that was the '80s when they were kind of bleeding out, and that's before they hit their Renaissance. And so they were like, yeah, sure, whatever. Just rent it out to whatever we can. And then I believe it was like the later 80s, whenever the the Little Mermaid came out, is when the Renaissance boom came out. Especially when the Beauty of the Beast came out. Holy shit. Like, it changed, it changed animation in general because what happened was uh, the Oscars, I don't believe that they had an animation nomination before Beauty and the Beast. Because these, like, pompous dudes who grew up watching a bunch of movies from, like, the 40s and 50s, they didn't take animation seriously at all. They thought it was just little kids' cartoon media. But then they watched um, this reel of, like, unfinished uh, finished, unfinished uh, cartoon of the Beauty and the Beast and all the pieces that have to go together and how hard animation is, actually. And they were like, oh, okay. This looks fantastic. And so they added an animation um, nomination because of Beauty and the Beast. So because of that and Oscars being such a huge advertisement in this Renaissance period is what really pushed Disney to what it is nowadays. Come to think of it, you could thank um, Michael Eisner for that because he he hated. Uh, what was that movie that was a uh, fantasy and it cost uh just need to go into a financial cripple. Do you guys know? Oh, Black Cauldron. So he hated the he hated the Black Cauldron. The Black Cauldron would do so well nowadays if they just redid the story. It'd be because everybody loves like fantasy stories, right? But it did not do well whenever it came out. Plus, it was kind of like not a very well written story. Yeah, it grossed twenty one million against a budget of forty four million. Yeah, 
So it and it caused a lot of the animators to quit. I believe that's what caused um hmm. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But the guy who made uh God, I'm trying to not look up names off the top of my head, but he's like another animator who quit who came up with his own animation studio. Um the 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 animation he's the guy who made the movie about the mouse who moved to America and it's supposed to be about, about Oh the Fievel oh, series. Uh, yeah. The, Yes, is that it called guy. Uh, West something once upon a time in the West? Amer- or... American Tale. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so the animator for that, I'm forgetting his name off the top of my head. I don't know why. I'm sorry, anyone who's listening to this podcast, hoping to get some kind of information. You're talking about Don Bluth? Just, Don Bluth. Names are just eluding me today. I'm so sorry. So, like, Don Bluth quit because he was originally supposed to work on the Black Cauldron because there was really poor management with that. It was in production hell. And then Michael Eisner... And these other producers from like Universal, like three dudes from Universal came in and they just kind of came into Disney. They're like, okay, this is what you're going to do with Disney. And them pushing Little Mermaid, which also, you know, created the whole musical scene with Disney because they, they had some musical, you know, animated movies, but they made it into this whole musical phenomenon and they made it to where little girls and merchandise could be sell from this product and that's how they viewed it they viewed it less of like a piece of art and more of a product and that's what pushed disney to where its philosophy is nowadays yeah they had three critical successes back to back to back that were all very similar in the way they portrayed the story and that was little mermaid beauty and the beast and then they really hit it hard with aladdin yeah like that real those three movies together like completely changed the landscape so that by the time that you got to the lion king in 1994 like they had a formula and it worked and people loved it and then lion king wasn't even supposed to work out because they're like this furry movie about cartoon lions that's (laughs) fucking stupid and then they thought pocahontas was gonna win because pocahontas is more towards the formula they thought we were going to but pocahontas is boring as fucking shit it's a terrible movie and then because they are in the B team, right? They're like, okay, we have a high standard to live up to because it's Disney. And they really, I think The Lion King is like the perfect movie that's ever been created. I think it's the perfect movie. And they, it really just, it changed Disney forever. It put the nail on the head. Like, okay, this is, this is staying for a long time. Disney is here to stay with The Lion King because it's still like one of the top grossing movies of all time. That's so, yeah. All they had to do was take Kimba the White Lion and Disneyify it. <laughs> That's a go. lie. That's a blatant fucking lie. Okay, <laughs> Kimba. <laughs> Look, I know a lot of people don't like your movie sucks because he's a furry, but he went he he went to really great detail why Kimba is not the same as Lion King. Okay, okay, damn it. I stand by it. <clears throat> but yeah, anything else before we leave? I think I think we've hit pretty much every single topic that I want to talk about today. I want to thank Yellow Flash for coming on the show today. I know most of the people that are watching this video are fans of his show, and so he doesn't really need to advertise. They already know where to find him, but, you know, maybe someday this podcast actually takes off and people are going through, like, the first couple episodes. Oh, this podcast, wow. I want to see how bad they sucked when they first started people out. People find Gator's hard drive in the ancient ruins and civilizations, some aliens, and they want to figure out who the whole Flash was. Because of this hard drive, <laughs> right? Mind. Exactly. At that point, just check out my Odyssey. <laughs> my Odyssey that'll still be around. That's going to be Odyssey dot com slash at Yellow Flash. Is that is that what it, yeah. the URL is? Yep. Yeah. Slash at Yellow Flash. There we go. I just want to make sure I was right on that. Pretty sure that's right. Yep. It, it pulled it right up. Yep. Odyssey dot com slash at Yellow Flash, and of course, Spooky Weeb Trash. My co-host the the anchor the anchor on the show the sub to your dom exactly (laughs) normally normally on the show we usually have like a third co-host but we tried to we were tried this week to kind of rotate people around because we like to keep that third co-host spot rolling we had cody the past two weeks in a row we wanted to get somebody in there but unfortunately like the two people i talked to didn't work out time wise it's it's fun trying to like schedule and organize everything around these shows because everybody's very, very busy and doing stuff. So it's good to actually be able to get people together for even like an hour, 30 minutes of a recording. So, yeah, uh, 
Yeah, but, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, should let us know um, how you guys feel about the three co-hosts, four co-hosts, what you prefer. We we'll, 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 we like reading. Yeah, give us suggestions. Anything you want to like, want us to talk about? We like, we like that. We like how this is really uh, doing pretty well. I would say, and uh, you guys seem to like it. So if you guys want to give us some feedback, we like to read the comments. We do, and sometimes we respond. So really appreciate it if you do. We will. Absolutely. Topics to talk about, guests you want on the program, even even uh, like people you want to see do some co-hosting, rotating Call in and gay out. gay and that we should kill ourselves. Yes, we love that. Please, more. <laughs> oh, YouTube YouTube really loves to see those in the comments. <laughs> it totally doesn't the get best comments. comments. <laughs> All right, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today, and you will find us anchor.fm slash anime boomers. You can also find this video on YouTube, youtube.com slash the Gator Gamer, or you can go directly to animeboomers.live and gatortime.live and they will point you. Eventually, there's going to be a website there. But for the moment, as of this recording, they will point you to the YouTube channel. I want to thank Yellow Flash for joining us, Spooky Weeb Trash for co-hosting, and I will see you guys starside.